YouTube, Philly G with Different Dimension Gaming here, coming at you with my updated for 2024 branded Preta Plant deck list. This is the first video of the year, so I thought I would post my personal favorite deck and our most popular video with some new spice and a new update. But with that being said, let's jump right into it. Just like last time, we're going to be playing three copies of Preta Plant Orphus Scorpio. This card, when normal or special summon, you can disc, you can send a monster from your hand to the graveyard, and then you can summon a Preta Plant monster from your deck. It only is used that effect once per turn, and it pairs really nicely with our Preta Plant Darling Tonya Cobra, which says when it's summoned by the effect of a Preta Plant monster, you can add a fusion spell or polymerization spell from your deck to your hand. You can only activate that effect once per duel. And then we're going to play two copies of Preta Plant Clammy Dosundu, or Clammy Dosundu, depending how you want to pronounce it. If your opponent has a monster with a Predator counter, you can fuse this card with that monster. Or if your opponent doesn't have anything with a Predator counter, you can fuse it with monsters on your side of the field or in your hand. So it's kind of a super poly and kind of a polymerization at the same time. We're going to play two copies of Preta Plant Biplis, or Bif Biplis, depending how you want to pronounce it. If it's sent to the graveyard, you can add a Preta Plant monster from your deck to your hand, except for itself. And if a monster with a Predator counter is on the field, you can summon it from your graveyard, but it's banished when it leaves the field. You can only use each effect once per turn. This is a really good card to send off of some of our spells or a discard off our Orphus Scorpio because we get advantage from it. We're going to play three copies of Preta Plant Boo Follicula. This card, if it's in the Pendulum Scale, can be used as a polymerization. And it pairs really nicely with our copy of Preta Plant Triantis. If it's in the Pendulum Scale, you can fuse both cards in your Pendulum Scales. So these two work really well in tandem together. And then if Triantis is used as fusion material in the Pendulum Zone or on the field, you can give your opponent's monsters a predator counter times the amount of fusion materials used. And then Bufalicula will recycle a card from your face-up extra deck back to your hand if it's used as fusion material. So Bufalicula will get you Triantis, and Triantis will get you predator counters, which are really good for the predator plant strategy. But that's it for the predator plant monster. It's not a huge list, but it's a good list for this deck because it gives you all the consistency you need. Now we're going to go through the rest of the deck profile a little bit differently than last time is I'm going to go through the spells and then with each package in the deck I'm going to show you the monsters and the spells at the same time. But for just the generic spells, especially our Preta Plant spells, we're going to be playing three copies of Preta Practice. This is the best one card starter in your deck, maybe aside from Branded Fusion itself. Because this card will special summon a Predator Plant from your hand and then add a Predator Plant from your deck to your hand. So the best combo with this is to activate it, summon Orphus Scorpio, and then you search your Biplisp, and then you use Scorpio's effect to discard your Biplisp to summon and search. And then on a new chain, you will get your search and your search with the monster that you summon. Of course, if that's you, if you summon Darling Tonya Cobra, which is the best option off of Orphus Scorpio. And then for just the generic spells that we're playing, we're gonna be playing two copies of Polymerization, two copies of Super Polymerization. You can play three. I'm playing two just because I like it at two. And with the changes we've made, the extra deck has gotten a lot tighter and we've had to eliminate hand traps from this list entirely to facilitate some of the new options in the extra deck. One copy of Instant Fusion and one copy of Preta Prime Fusion. I wasn't playing Preta Prime Fusion before because it's kind of super poly, but your opponent can respond to it and you need two monsters on, on your side of the field. But what it is good at is another battle phase fusion card where you don't have to discard like you do with super poly. That's it for our generic fusion spells. Now getting into some of the packages in this deck. 
we're gonna play two copies of Edgem Chain and the three copies of Fright for Patchwork. And we're doing this because Patchwork searches chain and polymerization, and then chain searches our patchwork. And it's a really easy card to help with your fusions because everything in the extra deck either needs a card in hand or a dark monster, and Edge of Chain is both. And just like last time, we're playing a very small branded package. In fact, we're playing a smaller package this time, and we're only playing two copies of Fallen of Albaz, the Light Hex Sealed Fusion, and three copies of Branded Fusion. Now, the Light Hex Sealed Fusion is exclusively to go into our Albion plays. This can be replaced by any other light monster in the game. I just haven't found a better option yet. It's also a really good card to go into our Dragoon plays. And for the new spice of the deck, the new flavor that I, I've added, you're playing one Destiny Hero Celestial, one Destiny Hero Dogma, and the three copies of Fusion Destiny. Now, this 100% should be Destiny Hero Dasher, but I've only got the one copy of Dasher, and it's in my branded Chimera deck, which I will be posting soon, depending if I make any changes in the coming weeks after the Phantom Nightmare set release. So this should be Dasher, but the rest of this is exactly what it should be. Celestial is Pot of Greed, and Dasher is a free summon of a monster. And the Fusion Destiny, because we're locked into Fusions, we're okay with it, because this is going to be the last card that you activate on your turn. Because Fusion Destiny locks you into Dark Heroes. And then, just for the rest of the cards in the deck, we're going to be playing three copies of Allure of Darkness, just to help us with some consistency. One called by the Grave, and then the one trap card that we're playing. And the one trap we're playing is Preta Planning. This card, when activated, you send a Preta Plant monster from your deck to the graveyard, which is why we're playing two Biplis. We get one off of Orphus Scorpio and one off of Preta Planning. And when it's activated, so you send the Predator Plant, and then all monsters on the field gain a Predator Counter. And a Predator Counter makes the monster dark, and if it has a level, the level becomes one. So Eggsies and Links are safe from the, the modulation, but they're not safe from the attribute change. Because a lot of our extra deck needs a Predator Plant and a dark monster, or just dark monsters. And then if it's in the graveyard, except the turn it's sent there, if you fusion summon a dark monster, you can banish it from your graveyard and destroy a card on the field. So it's an interruption, and it gives everything a counter, which facilitates some of our fusion plays. For the extra deck, we'll be playing two copies of Predator Plant Ambulinoides. This needs two Predator Plant monsters, and it's also our instant fusion target. And when it's summoned, it adds a Predator Plant card from your deck to your hand. And then you can contribute itself or a monster with a Predator Counter to summon a Predator Plant monster from your deck. So if for some reason you don't have Orphan Scorpio in your hand and you have to hard summon this, you can tribute it and get your Darling Tonya Cobra that way. Then we're playing two copies of Predator Plant Chimera Flesia. It needs a Predator Plant and a Dark Monster. Once per turn, you can target a monster on the field with a level lower than itself. It's a level 7. And you can banish that target. Then, if it's battling an opponent's monster, you can make that opponent's monster lose a 1,000 attack, and Chimera Flesia gains a 1,000 attack. And... The turn after it was sent to the graveyard, in the standby phase, you can add a fusion or polymerization spell card from your deck to your hand. So it's got four effects, and they're all very strong effects. And for our boss monster, as far as Predator Plants go, we're going to be playing the one copy of Starving Venom, Predator Power Fusion Dragon. It needs a dark fusion monster and a fusion monster, which is very easy to make in this deck. It's always treated as a Predator Plant card, 
When your opponent activates a card or effect, you can tribute a monster with a predator counter from either side of the field to negate the activation and destroy it. That effect is a soft once per turn, which comes into play with the second effect of predator power, because when it leaves the field by an opponent's card, you can summon a dark monster from your graveyard. So, if you activate your predator planning and you get everything on the field a predator counter, if you time it right, you can give three or four counters out. If this guy leaves the field, you can summon itself back, get the negate again, leaves the field, come on back, get, and get to the negate again. Very strong card, very sticky on the board as well. And then for our branded cards, we're playing the exact same lineup. One Albion, one Lubellion, one Mirror Jade. We don't summon Lubellion a lot in this deck. It's usually a late game play if we're in, a, in the middle of a grind game. Because a lot of the time we're going straight from Albion into our copy of Dr Dragoon. And we do that because we use Albaz and Delight Hexial Fusion to summon Albion. And then because Albion... Or sorry, because Albaz is a dragon effect monster, the Light Hex Fusion takes the place of our Dark Magician, and the Albaz is treated as a dragon, obviously. Dragoon is an Omni Negate, which means it can negate anything by discarding a card. Or we do have a lot of cards that kind of replace themselves in our hand, like our Chimera Flesia and our Biplus all gain us cards in our hand, which are good for our discards off of Super Poly and our Dragoon. And then for some of our more generic cards, we're playing the one copy of Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, where it needs two Destiny Hero monsters. And then if it's destroyed, it can summon itself in the next standby phase, and it can destroy a card you control and a, and a card your opponent controls quick effect at any time. Fusion Destiny, if you use to summon this guy, he is destroyed at the end of the next turn, which is fine because it activates his effect anyways. We're playing the one Magnum the Reliever, another newer card added to the deck. It needs a monster summoned from the extra deck and a monster in the hand. So you can't Super Poly this because Super Poly is only on the field, but you can very easily make this card with the cards in your deck. If it's, if it's summoned, you can target a polymerization spell or a fusion spell in your graveyard, place it on the bottom of your deck, and then draw a card. So it also recurs as resources with our Fright for Patchwork. And then if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can banish a polymerization spell or a fusion spell from your graveyard, target a mark card on the field, and destroy it. So it's an interruption and a draw. Again, we want cards in our hand because we do a fair amount of discarding in this deck. And for the Super Poly targets, we're playing the one copy of Predator Planet Drago Stapelia. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, but everyone knows you can give a monster your opponent controls with a Predator counter. You, know, you can give it a counter. But what they don't realize is it negates everything with a Predator counter. So if your opponent summons four monsters and you activate Predator Planning and then you activate this guy's effect, you just negate their whole board. So it's basically Skill Drain. Playing the one copy of Predator Plant Typher Overton and the one copy of Starting Random Fusion Dragon. A lot of people have played Star Venom for a long time because it was just the best generic Super Poly target. Obviously we've got cards like Garura and stuff like that, but I'm trying to be a more budget friendly deck list and we can't really use Garuda. I mean the, the draw is great but we kind of just want to go for power hits because in the long game we lose because we use so many resources on our first turn. So, so try for Overtum is a fantastic card where Star Venom needs two darks, Overtum needs three but it negates the summon of a monster from the extra deck. And it gains the attack of monsters on the field with predator counters. So it becomes big and it negates on the extra deck. And then if your opponent has a monster with a predator counter, you can summon it back from the graveyard. And for the last card, 
Greedy Venom Fusion Dragon. This needs a Prada Plant Monster and a Dark Monster whose original level is 8 or higher. So while Storming Venom gains the attack of a special summon monster on the field and it wipes the board when it leaves the field of special summon monsters, Greedy Venom steps it up a notch. You can target a card on a monster on the field until the end of this turn, its attack becomes zero and it has its effects negated. If this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can banish a level eight or higher dark monster, destroy all cards on the field, and then summon it back. That effect is not a once per turn. Again, these cards are very sticky. So you destroy it, banish, bring it back. Destroy it, banish, bring it back. And it wipes the field every single time you do this. Which can trigger some other effects, like if you have your Star Venom out. A lot of cards say like the first time a card will be destroyed. It's, it's, it's not destroyed. So if you do this, you destroy this guy, banish a level 8, destroy all cards on the field. So let's say that you have a card that once per turn can't be destroyed, not destroyed, activates, and then it destroys it. This deck is sticky, it's very fun to play, it's one of my favorite decks I've ever played, and I look very forward to playing it again in my locals. I played it this past weekend, it performed very well, I was very happy with it, but let us know what you think down below. I've been Philly J, we'll see you next time.